Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Strange Fantasy. I'm Travis. Ashley here. We're the creators, writers, and producers of the show. And we just wanted to take a quick second before diving into tonight's tawdry tale to let you know that if you like Strange Fantasy, be sure and show your love by subscribing, downloading, and rating the show on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the many platforms we exist on. And for exclusive rewards and merchandise are just to donate to our cause to help us to continue to thrive. Be sure to visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange fantasy. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Strange Fantasy Show for updates and haunting original art. All this and more can be found at our website, strangefantasyshow.com. And now... Your feature presentation. To another regaling of strange fantasy. Obscure odysseys meant to shock the nervous system and stir the very core of your soul. Tonight's tale is of the inner mind placed into isolation. A self-made prison that keeps out the world at large. However, even the smallest of lights can shine through the deepest darkness. In this installment entitled, The Possession. Just a second. Wait, hurry up, Arthur. I'm losing my grid. Sorry, I had dish gloves on and I had to change them for my, well, other gloves. A glove is a glove, Arthur. I know, I know. You do have a key for a reason, you know. I don't do that. I don't walk into other people's homes. I don't care how long I've known them, it's rude. I don't care as long as it's just you, Cyrus. Well, I do. You don't walk in on me when I'm working with my patients online. I don't walk in on you when you're doing whatever you do when you're home alone. Are you able to stay for dinner? No, not tonight, I'm afraid. I've got a half dozen prescriptions I gotta get delivered. I still can't believe you deliver all those prescriptions yourself. On TV, people always have to pick up prescriptions at the pharmacist. And for those people like you that don't ever leave their homes? Couldn't you mail them then and save lots of time? That's illegal. Or if it isn't, it should be. Through the mail is no place to be sent in such dangerous substances. Who knows who could wind up with them. No, I like to hand deliver my prescriptions. Just like I enjoy bringing you your groceries. Fair enough. What's wrong? Headache? Auditory hallucinations? Uh, just a headache. It's been coming in waves. Have you been taking your meds? Yes. Because if you've been skipping or doubling up, then... I've been taking them on time and in the right amount. I'll be back tomorrow morning around 10. I'll have my online sessions till noon, and then we can go do our session from noon to 1. Sound all right? All right. Early, Cyrus. I haven't even had time to start breakfast yet. Ha! 
Hello, Arthur. How you been? No, thank you. We don't want any. Now, hang on a second, Arthur. You're not getting rid of me that easily. Not this time. My lawyer said I don't have to let you in and I don't have to talk to you if I don't want Unless to. I need to question you about a crime. Which, surprise, surprise, I do. Now we have three choices. We could do this down at the station, right here at the door. Or you can invite me in, personally. I don't have a preference. That's an intimidation technique. You're trying to- Yeah, Arthur. You know all the lines. You're right, of course, but the fact remains, I'm perfectly within my rights to do so. I've presented you with three perfectly legal options, and now you get to choose one you want to take advantage of. And if I don't want to choose? If you don't like any of your options, well, you could choose to slam this door in my face, in which case, I come back here with an arrest warrant, and then you get no choice except to do this down at the station under circumstances that are slightly less hospitable than I'm offering now. You need proof of a crime and reasonable proof of my connection to the crime in order to arrest me. Who says I don't? You couldn't because I haven't done anything. Have I? To tell you the truth, I'm getting a little bored with this game, Arthur. We go through this song and dance every time and you always end up letting me in. Then please, come in. That's more like it. So, Arthur. It's been a while. Eight months, 11 days. That's right. It's sweet that you care so much. I just want to be left alone. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wizard. We all gotta grow up and take our medicine sometime. You know, I'd love something to drink. Old roast, no cream, two sugars. No sugar. I switched to artificial sweetener now. I'm trying to live healthy. Aren't you ever going to get rid of all this junk? Ugh. Is this a doll, Arthur? Dr. Weindeck encourages my collections. He says it's a low-risk way to manage my issues with control and to create structure for myself. He also says many of my issues of control are rooted in my experiences with you. I'll take that as a compliment. It wasn't one. So you had some questions, Detective? Right to it then, Arthur. Where were you last night? I was here, home where I always am. Can anyone validate that? No. Well, if you- I haven't left my home in three years. Three years, eight months, two weeks, and two days. The last time I left was when I was arrested for abducting Piper McConnell, age 16. Yeah, well, them's the breaks. You know, if they hadn't refused to charge you, I would have nailed you to the wall on that one. Something must have scared them pretty bad to get them to move away. You're one lucky son of a bitch, you know that? Very lucky. Are we done? No. You see, I've got another missing girl. Same age, race, and build as the others. You're a type of girl, actually. So I find myself thinking, all has been quiet around the Atkins place for a while. I bet old Arthur is just itching to find himself a nice young girl, all fresh-faced and new and naive. How you been feeling lately, Arthur? I haven't left my home since October 7th, 2013. How do you suppose I abducted somebody from the comfort of my kitchen? You know, for somebody who supposedly doesn't leave their home, you sure have a lot of new junk every time I drop by. Yeah, well, the internet is a magical place. Internet brings you these baby dolls? Please, they are to be looked at only, not handled. They're handled, they could be damaged. So you just have all this junk laying around to look at? You don't think this is creepy? Dr. Weindeck brings me things. It's like a doctor giving a lollipop to a child after they've got their shots. The psychology is sound. <sighs> yeah, a lollipop won't give me nightmares though. You're seriously telling me this helps you? A sister had a doll collection. The psychology is sound. Really? It's the dead eyes that do it for you, isn't it? It's complicated. I've simplified it for your benefit. I never said I was perfect. Good. But that doesn't mean I'm a criminal. Can we be frank for just a minute, Arthur? I don't like you. And more than just how and why, you might think. The past is a past, and I'm all good with that. I made mistakes, which I can't undo. We all do. We're human. But what I can't stand about you, Arthur, the thing that really sticks in my craw, isn't that you lie to me criminals lie to the police all the time that I'm used to what really bothers me is that you actually lie to yourself and you're stupid enough or willful enough or whatever you are to buy into your own crap 
you've been playing the victim so long, you've actually begun to believe it yourself. Your very own Frankenstein monster that doesn't realize he's a monster. Well, never mind. I'll just leave you to stew on that for a while, one way or another. I will get you. By the way, you'll call me if you hear anything about that missing girl. She turns up, I mean. Check the usual places. Under the floorboards, the garden, under the cushions of the couch. I'm always losing stuff back there. Oh, and in case you've never read Frankenstein before, let me tell you how it ends. As soon as the villagers become aware of the monster in the castle, they chase it down and burn it alive with torches. See you around, Arthur. Frankenstein was the creator. The creature had no name. The creature didn't die in a fire. He escapes to live in isolation for the rest of his life. Idiot. Arthur. Arthur. Arthur, it's Cyrus. Are you all right in there? Uh, yes, sorry, I wasn't expecting you for at least another half hour. A half hour? I'm almost 45 minutes late. I thought you'd be lecturing my ear off. Sorry, I must have dozed off. Oh, you don't have your rolling suitcase. Don't need it today. Light workload. No files needed. I actually have to get right to work in just a minute, though. Yeah, it's fine. What's wrong, Arthur? I haven't seen you like this in ages. I had an unwelcome visitor. Let me guess. Detective Price? Yep, Price. Price? Yep. That's your friend, right? The one who... Yes. Right. Well, what did he want? Apart from butchering classic literature? Do you want to talk about it? You have to do your online sessions first. That's the schedule. First them, then me. You sure? That's the schedule. Hey, I do have something for you, though. Might cheer you up. Yeah? Yeah, I was gonna give it to you for today's session, but I think I can maybe mix things up a bit. You don't need to get me things. Are you kidding me? You're my best patient. Between you and the great state of Rhode Island, my kid may actually get to go to college. Hey, leave the door open for me, will ya? It's kinda heavy. Do you need a hand? Nope, I've got it. There. What in the world? You like it? It's huge. And heavy as all hell. Wherever did you find something like that? While I was out delivering prescriptions last night, the house next door to one of them had an estate sale packing up, and I saw it being loaded onto the truck, and I just knew it. You know, you love it. Now, don't touch it. It's an antique. Just like the large version of the one you said your sister had. Yeah. Just like it. Only... This is life-sized. I think the body is solid mahogany. Or at least that's what the lady said. I have some great ideas of how we can use her in our sessions, actually. You don't think it's a little much? Well, if you don't like it. No, it's kind of relaxing, you know, like having a friend. No worries, Arthur. That's why she's here. I have decided it is my goal to get you out of this house by Christmas. I... I don't leave. We'll see. I have a mission. Well, I'll leave you two to get acquainted. Just promise me. I won't touch it. That's my boy. All right, I'll be in the basement if you need me. Hello, my name is Arthur Adkin. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry it's a little cluttered. I don't throw many things away. What's your name? Or hasn't Cyrus given you one yet? I should wait. I don't want to give you a name if you already have one. It could get confusing. And it'd be rude. I think of myself as a polite person. At least I try to be. Cyrus tried this once before, years ago. When we first started doing sessions, that was before I still went outside. This is weird. I need you to understand that I know you're just a doll. I just wanted you to feel welcome. No, you can't actually feel welcome. Not, not in the sense that I do, at least, but... I want, I want to put it out there to, to whatever is out there that I'm glad you're here. It gets lonely with just Cyrus for company sometimes. He's a great listener, too. I, I mean, I'm sure you already... Hi. 
Hello, my name is Angela Wiseman. I'm from the city. We've noticed a spike in your water usage by over 500% so far this month. Have you been using more water than usual? No, same as always. Well, then it's likely you have a leak. Mind if I come in and take a look around? Actually, this isn't a good time. I understand, sir, but you really want to get this looked at. If the leak isn't in your home, then it's in the yard, and we don't want to go digging up the yard if we don't have to, do we? I haven't seen any leak. Well, these things sometimes aren't noticeable unless you know where to look. Ma'am, I really don't like people being in my house. I'll be as quick as I can be. Scout's honor. Is the missus home? I don't have a missus. Oh. I thought I heard you talking to someone, or was that the gentleman from the van? It, yes, I, I was talking to my... Uh, Cyrus, uh, are you going to... Kitchen through here? Yes, but there's no... Hey, you can't just come in to... Is the water heater downstairs? Chances are, if you have a leak, it's from down there. Yes, but you can't go down there. It's occupied. My friend works from there, and he cannot be disturbed, please. Right. Well, you have a bathroom, you know, to check the pipes. Why are you doing this? If we don't find that leak when your bill comes... You're not from this city. Of course I am. No, you're not. You're not wearing a polo shirt, which is standard dress for city employees when visiting homes. You also don't have any identification visible and weren't in the kitchen long enough to have looked for anything relating to the plumbing. So who are you? Another college kid trying to win some kind of a bet, or are you just trying to rob me? Can't Keep you people just me. leave me alone? Are you all right up there, Arthur? Fine. I, I'm just fine. Knocked over some stuff, that's all. I got it. You're awfully quiet today, Arthur. Price. And? It makes me uncomfortable. It has every reason to. You two have quite the history together. It's more than that. He's a trigger for your anxiety. I know that. When he shows up, he makes me feel so guilty. About... I don't know. You can't trust any of the memories associated with your parents' death. You've created false memories, and they've become irrevocably intermixed with the real ones. I know that, too. This is something fresher. More immediate. Have you done anything recently to feel guilty about? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? It's a feeling like I, I've got nothing to feel guilty about, but I must be guilty about something because he's here. The presence of an officer makes a person hyper aware of their behavior, which makes them feel more like they must be doing something wrong, which feeds the paranoia. That, that makes sense. You factor in your history with Price, and it's amazing you kept your temper with him at all. You did keep your temper with him, didn't you? Yes. You see? You should feel proud of yourself. I don't. What if he's right? Right about what? That I kidnapped that missing girl. Did you kidnap this girl? No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Well, that's three pretty different levels of commitment there, Arthur. What if I did, but I don't remember? I lose time sometimes. That's different than losing chunks of time. But is it? Yes, very actually. But this is different. What if I... I think I'm controlling myself, and that I'm not doing bad things, but what if I really am, and I just can't remember? Sometimes I sit down, and the voice is just... And the next thing I know, two hours have gone by, and I have no idea what I've been doing. By my count, you've been accused and or questioned by Price over 25 times in the last five years. And in that time, has he ever made anything stick to you? He says I'm lucky. You're either innocent, or you're the luckiest criminal mastermind on this side of the Mississippi. Do you believe in the concept of a soul? That's beyond my pay grade. Well, not as my doctor then, but as my friend. I can't answer that. Besides, ultimately, that's a question you have to answer for yourself. Might I ask what prompted that question? Something Price said. Are you still with me? Arthur? Arthur? I just felt like... We were being watched. Have you been getting this feeling often? No, it's probably because of the girl. What girl? Earlier, when you were downstairs, there was a girl at the door. She said she was with the city, but I think she was just another college kid on a dare. It's been a while since you've had one of those, hasn't it? Yeah, I figured the novelty might actually be wearing off. But she still bothered you? Well, she forced her way into the house. Forced is a strong word, actually. Anyway, she came in and poked around for a few minutes and then ran out of here. No harm done. Just left me feeling a bit... That happens again? You can always call the police. You have that right, you know. Not every police officer is going to be a Detective Price. 
Have you given her a name yet, the doll? No, I didn't want to in case you'd already given her one. She's your house guest. You have the honor. Guinevere. I like it, Guinevere. So you remember the exercise from before? Talk to her, treat her how I would treat a friend, keep my hands to myself. Good. You talk to her yet? I introduced myself. I'm sure you get along just fine. Well, I'm going to end our session a little early today, Arthur. Give you two a chance to chit-chat. Cyrus. Hmm? Thank you. My pleasure. You know what else I could do for you? Here, don't tell anyone. I really should be giving you a prescription, but I know you won't sleep tonight unless you have these. Here, they're tranquilizers. They're really high dosage, so you only need to take half one. Thanks, Cyrus. What are friends for? I'll see you tomorrow. You bet. Hey, if there's anything in the news about that missing girl, do you want me to let you know? Please. I figure if Price comes knocking again, I'd better be ready. Hello? Hello? Anybody there? I can see someone moving in the kitchen. If there's anybody there, you'd better go before I call the police. Guinevere? Gwen, are you alone in there? Gwen, what are you doing in here? I put you by the window so you could look at the garden. How did you get to the kitchen? Am I awake right now? I... You! What are you doing in my house? This is my house. Why are you in my house? Look, I don't want any trouble, all right? Just, just let me go and I'll, I'll go, okay? This is my home. Why are you in my home? I, I was looking around, okay? Just just looking. I, I didn't steal anything. I promise. Just let me go. You are not welcome here. This is my private home and you are trespassing. Please don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. Please, just go. Yes? Arthur, it's me. Cyrus, I am so glad you're here. What's wrong? It's that girl, that woman, she was here last night in my house. Slow down, Arthur. Tell me exactly what happened. What happened is that she was here in my house, in my home, Cyrus. You, now you calm right down, Arthur. Who was here? The woman, the one that came by when you were here yesterday, the one that said she worked for the city. I heard a noise last night and came downstairs and caught her in my kitchen. What was she doing there? What was she doing? She, she was hiding. That's what she was doing. Why would this woman break into your house? I don't know. I think maybe she works for Price. Maybe a private investigator or some kind of off-the-books informant. You said you caught her. What do you mean you caught her? I caught her in the kitchen. She was climbing out of one of the cupboards. She must have come in through the windows. But did you lay a hand on her? Oh, no, I didn't touch her. That's it. I found her in the kitchen. She ran. I tried to get out the front door, but had trouble, so I unlocked it, and she ran off into the night. Arthur, I'm going to ask you something, and it's going to upset you, but I need you to really think about it before you reply, all right? Are you sure there was someone in your house last night? What are you talking about? Of course there was. Did anyone else see her? Of course they did. They did? Oh yeah, at first the Easter Bunny didn't believe me, but between me, Santa Claus, and Sherlock Holmes, we convinced him to come downstairs and see for himself. Arthur. Of course nobody else saw her. She was in my house at two in the morning. I know what you're implying, but she was here, Cyrus. Did you take that tranquilizer I gave you last night? Yeah, yeah. Sit down, Arthur. It's just price. Have you been under a lot of stress lately? Well, I've, I've been typing a lot lately. You working on a new book? What inspired this, Arthur? Besides the fact that I need the money? I haven't stopped writing stories. In my head, I mean. I'm writing them down, I, I don't... What if I publish it and price starts showing up again? What if I publish it and price reads it and then... What if I publish and somebody copies the murders in the book again. Price will come after me. You are not responsible for what other people do. But if that's how it's used. Sickness finds sickness. Sorry, Arthur. You really think I imagined this woman? I saw her yesterday while you were downstairs right here. 
You may be getting worse, Arthur. That's one of the reasons I brought you the doll. To have something tangible to talk to. We've managed your audio hallucinations. We'll manage this too. That's something else. The doll. Guinevere. I don't like her. I want you to take her away. Well, you liked her yesterday. She moved. I put her by the window to see the garden. But then she was by the door. Maybe you are losing time. Right? There's no other explanation for it. I moved her during the night, except a few minutes ago before you arrived. I thought I heard her groaning. Groaning? Let me go get you some water. I'm not thirsty. Humor me. Here, I'll take Guinevere with me. Put her by the garden window. All right. If I imagined the woman, did I imagine her both times or just last night? What do you mean? Well, if I imagined her last night, I was on the tranquilizer, so that may have helped cause it, yeah? Right. But yesterday, I wasn't on anything. The brain deteriorates. It's a cauldron of chemicals. Any kind of imbalance can cause adverse effects. So what do I do? Well, nothing too severe going on there. Seeing people who aren't there isn't severe? You've been hearing people who aren't there for years, and we've managed that. If you say so. In a situation that was the epitome of your space being violated and you not having control, you still handled yourself with grace and dignity. I suppose that's true. Whatever happens, I'm here for you. I have an idea. Why don't I help you prep that brandy apple chicken you've been excited about for the past few days? Sounds good. I hope this lives up to expectation. Ah, I'll get it. You go on and get things started. Ah, Detective Price. Won't you come on inside? Huh, <laughs> wine deck. What can I do you for today? Arthur here? Of course he is. You know he doesn't leave the house. So he says, I'm here because I want to question Arthur about this missing girl. You want to question Arthur every time someone under the age of 20 comes within a five block radius of the house. This isn't a joke, Doctor. Whether he's responsible or not, there's a young woman missing. And I have reason to believe that Arthur might be connected. This I'd love to hear. I'm under no obligation to tell you anything. Oh, well have it your way then. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again when you have a warrant. Now look here, wine deck. I came to see Arthur, not you. And I'll ask my questions and be on my way. You know, this level of obsession you have with Arthur isn't healthy. I could really help you with that if you'd like. I came here to ask about a missing girl. Now either Arthur had something to do with it or he didn't. If he did, I would think you'd want to help out. If he didn't, well, I'd just as soon eliminate him as a suspect. Arthur, can you come in here a moment, please? Price still there? Yes, but it's all right. We're just all gonna have a little chat. That's all. And bring your new friend in, please. I'm sure the detective would love to meet her. You sure? I'm sure. What the hell is this? Detective, meet Guinevere. You want to explain this to me, Doc? Because if you're trying to convince me how normal our boy is here. She's a therapy doll. Cyrus got her for me a few days ago. Uh, so what the hell does this have to do with my missing girl? You said you wanted to eliminate Arthur as a suspect. You want to know why he couldn't have abducted her? She's an antique. One of a kind. I'm going to be cruel to be kind now, Arthur. I'm going to tip her over and she'll likely break into a million pieces. No, no, please don't. She, she doesn't need... It's all right. She's all right. Look, no harm done. What the hell kind of sideshow crap am I looking at? Arthur has been conditioned so that he will not put his hands on another person, especially not a woman. This is your proof that he won't catch a falling doll? I'm talking about a human being. I didn't mean- Can it, Geppetto? This is Jenna Kelker. She's 19. She was last seen three days ago, leaving her home at approximately 6.30 PM. Her mother said she was on her way to night class. Her bike was found less than three blocks from here. Now let's just say for the sake of argument that I believe you. There's some kind of rear window shut in who hasn't left his home for the last three years. You live right between the college and Kelka's house, which means she must have passed this way the night she disappeared. Now, what do you know? Don't look at him. You look at the picture and you tell me if you've ever seen her before. I don't think so. What about you, Cyrus? I think I might have, but not around here. I think she must live near one of my patients. You got a name for me? 
I can't give you the name of my patients, you know that, but I'll guess that that girl lives somewhere near Eisenhower. Shenandoah, one street over. Are we done here? There's still the little matter of the bicycle. Detective, I respect what you're wanting to do, but I promise you, Arthur is not responsible for that girl's disappearance. I'd prefer to hear that from him. I don't think so. That's all the conviction you can muster up. I suppose we'll be seeing each other again real soon. You're missing something obvious. Am I? It's right in front of your face. She's a 19-year-old who lives at home. Find the boyfriend. Statistically speaking, you find the boyfriend, you probably find her. You think she's shacking up with her boyfriend somewhere? It's as good an explanation as any. Then why'd she ditch the bike? Please, don't ever do that to me again. What are you talking about? We proved to him that- We didn't prove anything to him. Can we skip lunch? I'm really not feeling very hungry at the moment. You see, I have what Dr. Weindeck calls a schizoaffective disorder. And I hear these voices talking to me sometimes. And sometimes they tell me things. It's one of the many reasons Price hates me. You see, he doesn't... You just... You move. I'm being ridiculous. No, no, you moved. I saw it. I saw it. Airflow. Be a gust from the air conditioning. You didn't move on your own. You want me to believe you're what? Possessed? Haunted? Well, not happening. Now that wasn't my imagination. You groan. Objects don't groan. Dolls don't do that. I have dolls. They don't groan. Just give me something, please. A move, a groan. Am I just crazy? Is that it? Have, have I really gotten so bad that I can't even enjoy a stupid doll for company? Just give me some kind of noise. A grunt. A whisper. Anything. Shit! Shit! Oh, holy, holy shit! <laughs> oh, you got me real good. No, 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 no. Wait, I, I just came to apologize. Look, I know, all right? I'm sorry. I had no right to break in here last night. I'm sorry, all right? Well, you should be, Angela Wiseman. You can't go. You're not real. You were never here, so how can you go? My name's not Angela. Your name's not Angela? I broke into your house. Using my real name wouldn't exactly have been a great idea. Okay, okay, hold on. I, I just need a minute, okay? I just need a minute. Are you real? Of course I'm real. I'm going to regret this. My name's Billy Gilman. I'm a reporter. Reporter? I got a tip that Jenna Kelker had disappeared, and I was trying to get a headline. Why are you telling me all this? I may have crossed a line when I broke into your house last night. Oh, yeah, I'll say so. Look, I figured a guy that just kidnapped a 19-year-old girl probably wouldn't just let some woman who broke into his house go. You didn't try and hurt me. I figured I should probably give you the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt? Yeah. I'll offer you some coffee. Oh, thank you. I expected you to throw me out 10 seconds after I showed up, but you're making me sandwiches and coffee. I suppose it comes as a bit of a relief to find out I didn't imagine you. My doctor thought I made you up. You were a figment of my imagination. I googled the name you gave me and I couldn't find anybody that fit your description, so I thought he might be right. But you're not mad? You're still here. Why did you do it? Break into my house. Why didn't you just ask me whatever questions you had? You're saying you wouldn't have slammed the door in my face? I suppose you have a point there. I made a friend at the Rhode Island Police Department. I've been following this string of missing girls. Most of them are assumed runaways, but they date back years. He passed your name along as one of the persons of interest, and when I checked into you, I thought I had a scoop. Can I ask a silly favor? If you like. Can you turn that thing around? It's kind of creeping me out. When I was here the other night, I didn't even want to touch the thing. But did you? Well, it was blocking the window I came in through, so I had moved it over by the door. You have no idea what a relief that is. Why? Never mind. How about I move her into the kitchen? That'd be great. was a present from my doctor. Is that the guy I saw here the other day? That's him, Dr. Cyrus Weindeck. He's been my therapist for years. Well, I suppose it comes down to whether or not you know anything about Jenna Kelker. No, I don't recall having ever seen her before. How much do you know about me? Not a whole lot. Parents murdered when you were a child. Sister missing and presumed dead. You were the primary suspect, but the case against you was dismissed and no one else was ever charged. You have a small collection of books published under your name. You've pretty much got me summed up right there. 
I'd like to hear your side of things. Nobody has asked me for my side of things in almost 15 years. Well, my parents were killed when I was eight. Murdered. I had a 19-year-old sister who was home from college at the time. And that's all I really know for sure. I don't understand. What do you mean that's all you know for sure? When the police found me, they say I was holding a knife and covered in my parents' blood. You don't remember? Oh, I remember all right. I'm not sure I follow. I just don't know if what I remember was real or not. Cyrus calls them false memories. Price was a rookie back then. Well, when he found me, he was convinced that I had killed my parents and did something with the body of my sister. I take it since you were released, you were proved innocent. Oh, no. Everyone was pretty sure I'd done it. I had even confessed. That's how strong the case against me was. But when Price walked me through the crime scene, he broke every regulation in the book. Not only had he contaminated the crime scene, but I couldn't tell if I was remembering killing my parents because I killed my parents or because he had told me I had. But did you? To this day, I don't know if it's false memories or not. So they called it a mistrial or whatever those things are. Why would you have killed your parents? I mean, did they beat you or...? Mental health issues run in my family. So he screwed up all those years ago. And now anytime anyone within a 10 mile radius gets a cold, he thinks I have upgraded to bacteriological warfare. Ah, uh, I am so sorry. We seem to have conveniently breezed by the part where I said I don't know if I may or may not have murdered my parents. Look, Arthur, you've been pretty straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. I knew a little more about you than I let on. What I wasn't sure about was Jenna Kelker. But now, well, I think you're probably as much of a victim as anyone involved in this mess. I'm not a victim. I'm not so sure. Look, I hate to ask, but I've got a column to fill, and right now I've got nothing. I wouldn't mind making it a bit of a profile piece. The man behind the mistreatment and all that. Um, what was that? I don't know. Be you, here. You, you, don't, don't you're under me. arrest. Exigent circumstances, woman in distress. Thought you were more careful no, no, than this, no, Arthur. No, no, It was all a misunderstanding. Let no. him go. I can't leave. I can't. No. We were just talking. He wasn't attacking me. You have Please, the right let to me go. silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Arthur? Cyrus? Arthur, what are you doing here? I live here. I thought you'd been arrested. They didn't have enough to hold me. How'd you know I got arrested? Well, some woman called me, uh, Miss Billy Gilman. Oh, you, you you talked to her then? She's Angela Wiseman, you know. Who? Angela Wiseman is Billy Gilman. The woman who was here the other night, the, the one you thought I made up. Is she the one that got you arrested? Yes, but she, she didn't mean to... Uh, this was a misunderstanding at Dahl. Where is she? The woman? I don't know. Well, she called me on the phone. No. Gwen. Guinevere. She was just there on the floor. It's all right, Arthur. I picked her up. She's right here. Take her with you, Cyrus. There's something wrong with that thing. What do you mean? It's possessed or something. Whatever it is, it isn't right. Don't be silly. It's just an old doll. She was on the floor, Cyrus. She was coming for me. I left her in her chair and when I came back she was on the floor. Her weight probably shifted and she fell out. But it's done other things too, groaning and moving and I swear to you that thing moved. Why didn't you come? To the police station? Kept expecting you to come but you never did. I came here Arthur. I figure once they had you under arrest it wouldn't be long before they came and stripped this place bare. Looking for anything they could to link you to those missing girls. Now, do you want to tell me what happened? That woman I told you about, she's a reporter. So you think Price sent her? No, I don't think so, at least. If she was, then why'd she call you? I suppose you're right. Help me. What was that? What was what? You didn't hear it? No. Apart from being unceremoniously dragged from your home, how are you doing? Pretty terrible, actually. I, I can't tell if I'm losing my mind or if I'm just... You know I don't believe in ghosts, right? 
It's never come up. Well, I don't. Where did you say you got that doll from? It was an estate sale. That means the people who owned it before, well, it means they're dead, right? Arthur, you can't tell me you don't believe in ghosts and then in the next breath go and talk about ghosts. Just do me a favor and watch her for a while, will you? Just watch her. I know what I saw. Arthur, I've been here all evening, and it hasn't done anything. I think we may need to increase your medications. Now, I'll get out of your hair. I'm sure that after the kind of day you've had, you'd want to get some rest. Here, take this tranquilizer tonight, will you? All right. In fact, take two. No. Shh, please. Who are you? Who are you? No. It's, uh, it's just your meds. Let's go back to bed. Rough night. What am I doing here? You must have fallen asleep working. When did you get here? Oh, about ten minutes ago. You didn't answer the door, so I let myself in. I figured you'd taken my advice about those tranquilizers. Sleep well? Not at all, actually. This terrible dream. How'd I get down here? I told you, you must have fallen asleep working. No, I didn't. I went up to bed. I remember that. No idea. Well, I made you some fresh coffee. I've got to go ahead and get downstairs and get logged in. Cyrus, aren't you forgetting something? Maybe the laptop? Ah, yes. That would make things a lot easier, wouldn't it? Maybe after I'm done, we could talk about what you've written. Yeah, sounds good. Hello, Billy? Hey, Billy, I have a favor to ask. Could you find out any information on an estate sale that took place on Barrowman this past week? Yeah, yeah, anything on the family that was holding it. Don't ask me to explain, please. You will? No, oh, thanks. You're not gonna win that easily, doll. Find an item of pure copper and place the object. Come on, Arthur. And do this. She's not a person. It's okay if she's not a person. It's okay. You can do this. You have to protect Cyrus. You have to protect Ammonia? Does it mean? What does ammonia mean? What do I do? Please, no, don't. Please don't. What do you want? Who are you? Are, are you me? Are you my own dark thoughts? Are you my sister? Are you my mother? Who are you? No. No. Hi, Billy. Uh, did you get a chance to look into that estate sale on Barrowman yet? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, don't, hey, don't bother. There, there never was one. Hey, can you come over here, please? I, I, no, 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 right now. It's just... I, I really need you right now. Uh, something terrible has happened. No, I can't. I can't call Cyrus. No, I can't. I, no, I can't call the police. No. I, you must not think I did it. It's been Cyrus. The whole time. The whole time it was him. Please come over. I just... Got, because I just found Jenna Kelker. Hi. Is she all right, Arthur? Where is... Oh, my God, what did you do? It was Cyrus. He lied to me. Why haven't you helped her? I can't, I can't. God's sake, Arthur, what the hell's the matter with you? Lots of things. Well, get over it. This girl is hurt and scared and needs our help now. Have you called the ambulance? Ambulance? No. Call one now, Arthur. 
Look, touch. People touch. I grabbed your hand, okay? And yes, you should only touch when it is invited, but, but people need to touch each other. It's how we connect. It's how we show we care, and it's how we feel what someone else is feeling. And right now, this girl is hurting, and I need you to trust me and call an ambulance. Okay. What is that smell? Just a little chloroform. Uh, not, not. Hello. Hello. I, I, I need medical service, please. Give me that. Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, no, never mind. It was a false alarm. Yes, my mother fell, but she's all right now. Okay, thank you. Oh, you have a good evening, too. Bye-bye. <sighs> Arthur? I am disappointed in you. Why didn't you call me? What are you doing? Just an injection. What is that stuff? A paralytic. This way I can wake them up. But they'll be as limp as rag dolls. Why do you want them away? Uh, it's no fun if they're not awake, Arthur. That's the missing girl, isn't it? That's Jenna. Yes, it is. Just our type, isn't she, Arthur? I don't have a type. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Arthur. I've read your books. Of course you have a type. That's just fiction. That you get from your dreams. And a dream is just a wish the mind makes. No, 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 no. this is all wrong. Everything about this is wrong. Oh, calm down, Arthur. Everything's under control. I've been doing this a long time. How long? Hmm? How many? How long? Oh, well before I met you, Arthur. But I will say, since we met, it's been a brave new world. Come, sit with me a minute. Come on now, I'm not gonna bite. Are you going to sedate me? Inject me like them? Oh, heavens no, Arthur. Don't be silly, I'm your friend. You've been lying to me. Now, why would you think I'd want to hurt you? Because, because I found... What, them? Phew. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> really? Why did you keep lying to me? I told you she was alive and you lied to me over and over and... Well, you were never meant to find out. I had trouble finding the right dosage for the sedative. Apparently, she's got some redhead genes in her family. Did you know that redheads require more anesthetic than most people? I never knew that. I got carried away is all. It was my fault. I got brash and creative. And I was tired of confining my adventures to the basement. The basement? Arthur, you do realize I have no online patience. The reason I come over here is to play. What did you do to them? Oh, that's what makes it exciting. It's never the same twice. Every one of them is unique and gets their own special treatment. Sometimes it's quick. Most of the time, it's slow. There was one girl, um, Tiffany. I didn't lay a finger on her for almost a month. Spent an hour every day just tracing her with my eyes, letting her imagination do the work. You have been a godsend, Arthur. You really have. I can't play at home. My wife would be getting in the way. Coffee? Why? Same as I've always told you, Arthur. It's about control. It's what we all want out of life, to be in control. Now, you see, I love my wife, Arthur, but I could never treat her like this. I wouldn't want to. You, more than anyone, should appreciate what I mean. Mm. Oh. How old is this? Why me? Because you've been fighting for control your whole life. From the minute you lost your family, you've been fighting to regain control. Everything you do is about control. That's what our sessions have been all about. I have to call the police, Cyrus. You're not calling anybody. Why am I not calling anybody? Apart from the fact that nobody would believe you? It's not who you are, Arthur. I have to help them. Why? Why do you have to help them? It's not right. Millions of things aren't right, Arthur. Speeding is illegal. Millions of people do it every day, though. We have global warming, wars, people shooting up schools. The world is a chaotic place, Arthur. People like you and I are just part of the fabric. You feel guilty. Because, why, she was nice to you? My grandfather once had a drink with the German soldier, bought him a beer, 
Three days later, the German soldier still shot him on the battlefield. Being nice is just what you have to do when you've lost control. Like now, you mean? I think I know what you need. What are you doing? Well, just a little exercise in control. I don't think you understand exactly what we have here, Arthur. I want you to look at her eyes, Arthur. Okay? Just look at her eyes. Now, while you're looking, I want you to think of all the things you could do to her. It could literally be anything. Whenever, however, for however long you want to make it last. The living dead. You look into her eyes and you see that she knows that you are in complete control. That she's at your mercy. That's all she is. A toy. A possession. Something that belongs to you. Sometimes we love our toys and sometimes we break them. Jenna here already knows that. Don't you, Jenna? Anything we imagine. You look into those eyes and you imagine what you want to do and they stare right back at you and they're imagining the same things. You look into those eyes and they tell you exactly what you are. What is he gonna do to me, they ask. Anything I want. When she broke in, what did you want to do to her? I wanted to take her head in my hands. Good. I wanted to grab her hair and just smash her face in an encounter. I wanted to keep smashing it down over and over again. I wanted to keep going until her skull was in a million pieces, until she realized how wrong it was for her to be here. You can. And then she apologized. And now I just see her pain, and I don't like it. Now, I really am disappointed in you, Arthur. You were supposed to be my friend. No, I'm your therapist. But you only get out of therapy what you put in. Now come here. No! No! Arthur, come here. You're going to kill her anyway. Not necessarily. I've got enough chemicals over there to make a roofie seem like a pixie stick. But in order to do that, you're gonna have to take the fall for Jenna there. So you have a choice here, Arthur. Either both of them, Jenna and Miss Billy, or both of you, you and Jenna. And your new friend here wakes up tomorrow morning in the park and doesn't remember a thing. We're going to find out what kind of man you really are after all. What do you want me to do? Walk over to my bag there. Pick up the hypodermic, the brown vial there. Stick it through the cork and fill it up with four milliliters. Good. Now hold the base of it in your mouth. Hold out your right arm and tap the inside to find the vein. And when you've got it, press it home. Will it hurt? No. It'll be just like going to sleep. Who is it? Uh, it's Price. I got a call from Billy Gilman. Don't say a word. She was here a little while ago, but she left after an argument with Arthur. Do it. Help! Help, he's gonna kill us! You guys don't to get in here! Help! Help, he's crazy! He's gonna kill us all! Help! Help! Oh, you have to help. Arthur had the girl here the whole time. He's lying, it was him. Cyrus is the murderer. He's telling the truth. Arthur is innocent. Well, who are you going to believe, detective? A raving lunatic or... Hey! You startled me. Sorry, I didn't hear you come in. I figured I had a key for a reason. Well, dinner will be ready in a moment. I'm in no rush. How have you been? I started the restaurant on Friday. Just a line cook, but... It's a good start. The chef does a tasting once a week where everyone gets to introduce a dish for the special of the week, and everyone decides on a winner. Is that what we're having tonight? Maybe. <laughs> if it turns out to be good. If it turns out to be good. I wrote another chapter this morning. And? And then I threw up. You're still thinking about Billy, aren't you? It's been almost six months. She still hasn't spoken to me. I was going to give up my life for hers, and she won't even speak to me. She can't, Arthur. It's part of her life. She wants to leave it as far behind as possible. How can you do it? How can you put aside the horrible things that happened to you and just start fresh? You think you can't escape your past? Think that you're broken? Everyone's broken, Arthur. You think because you write murder mysteries it means you're some kind of monster? You told me you found writing to be cathartic. Do you know why? It's not because you like writing about murder and blood and killing. It's about beginnings. All your stories start with people who just want to be left alone to live their lives and then they're confronted by tragedy. That's what you want. 
You just can't see it happening without the tragedy. If we think about our lives, they're all just a series of stories, really. They all have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Sometimes they end well, sometimes they don't. But the ending is such a small part of the story. We can recognize when one chapter of our life is over, but most of us don't recognize when a new chapter has begun. Sometimes we do. Starting college, moving away from home. But there are so many beginnings we miss out on celebrating. We spend our lives thinking about how they're going to end and don't try things because we're afraid of how they might turn out. We never start anything. Every story ends with a new beginning. So concentrate on that. Don't make endings, make beginnings. I got it. Detective Price? Hi, Arthur. Can I come in? Can I say no? Yes, you can. Then please, come in. Hope I'm not interrupting dinner. Not yet. Got a couple more minutes before it's ready. Something I can do for you, Detective? Thought you'd like to know. I checked, and he took the plea deal. He did? You had all that evidence. Between that rolling suitcase of his and your basement, we found the DNA of over 20 different girls. It was the only way to get Windeck to admit where the bodies were buried. Don't worry, though. He may have avoided the death penalty, but he's got so many consecutive life sentences it'd make your head spin. Glad to hear it. Uh, you're, uh... You're gonna stay here, huh? I don't like living in the murder house, if that's what you're thinking. I just refuse to let myself be driven out of my own home. Victims need to take back what was taken from them. Can't argue there. Can I ask you something? Shoot. You've been pretty magnanimous about this whole thing. You don't secretly think I knew what he was up to, do you? No. Even his own wife and kid had no idea. No, he had us all fooled. I can't promise you'll never see me again, but I'm gonna try to leave you alone. Look to the future, you know? Arthur! Just keep your nose clean, Arthur. Come on, Jenna. Let's eat. When isolated for too long, the simplicity of turning away becomes second nature. However, when life is broken, outlooks can be formed anew, imaginary boundaries shattered, and new prospects awakened. <laughs> Thus concludes tonight's strange fantasy. Tune in next time for another look into the strange and obscure. Strange Fantasy presented The Possession, written by Michael Song, produced by Ashley Scarborough and Travis Scarborough, original score by Travis Scarborough and Danny Lucas. The players of tonight's tale are as follows. Heath Allen as Arthur, Travis Scarborough as Cyrus, Martina Olhauser as Billy, Trey Gonzalez as Detective Price, and Ashley Scarborough as Jenna. Strange Fantasy Show was created by Travis Scarborough. Strange Fantasy Show is copyright 2020 Strange Fantasy Productions, all rights reserved. Any and all characters appearing in this work are fictitious, and any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs>